Hello everyone, welcome to the segment sociological talk at sociology for life YouTube channel. Today we have very important guest Professor Abdul Mateen. Professor Abdul Mateen sir is a retired professor from Department of Sociology Aligarh Muslim University. He is associated with the Digital Sociology Ad hoc Group Indian Sociological Society. This has been introduced recently in 2020-22 and today we will have interactions on digital sociology issues uh, with a brief introduction of digital sociology and all. So at the outset I would like to ask Professor Abdul Mateen sir that what is digital sociology according to you sir? Thank you Mahmudul for giving me this opportunity to share my views on digital sociology. Uh, in conventional sociology, we understand by sociology as a web of social relationships. Uh, as far as the new area which is emerging is a uh, web of virtual relationships. Now the web of virtual relationships are not captured in the conventional web of social relationships. Therefore, we need to you know, coin the term digital sociology for good reasons. And there are many areas which uh, are taken into consideration in this uh, emerging discipline or sub-discipline within sociology that is digital sociology. Thank you sir uh, for uh, giving answer on these questions. This is a very pertinent issue that what is digital sociology and as you have said digital sociology is mainly uh, covers and focuses the web of uh, relationship which is based on the network society and that is the society. Yeah, so virtual relationship. Virtual relationship, yes sir. So, a uh, next question which is also arises in the minds of the students and all of us that uh, why digital sociology? Why not just sociology? Why digital sociology? Yeah, before I come to the next point, why digital sociology? Say for example, you know, when we talk of uh, community as such mm -hmm. and the way conventionally it is defined. Now, when you talk of virtual community and if we compare uh, traditional concept of community as such, and then we talk of virtual community, uh, they are different from each other, irrespective of the fact that there may be some similarities, but there are differences between the two. On the question of why digital sociology, I mean that needs some explanation. And my, uh, to the best of my understanding, there has, there is something called, I prefer to call it digital revolution. And you know, like normally as a sociologist, when we try to understand the origin of the subject sociology, then we relate it with the uh, industrial revolution. And because of industrial revolution, all the institutions, family, uh, economy, polity, all these got upside down. And there had been transformation from pre-industrial to industrial and in that scenario the new discipline so-called sociology August Paul invents. Something for the sake of juxtaposition we may see that digital revolution has already taken place at the middle of the 20th century and because of digital revolution uh, the technological changes have brought everything un upside down which is very similar to what happened because of the industrial revolution. However, the fundamental difference between industrial revolution which uh, eventually shaped the birth of sociology, digital revolution is basically also similarly uh, giving birth to what I call digital sociology because 
unlike industrial revolution when it was an outcome of uh, general purpose technology uh, which i use it uh, for digital sociology also the uh, discovery of uh, you know this uh, general purpose technology has made it possible and i think that the fundamental difference between then and now means industrial revolution and digital revolution is that the embeddedness of technology you know like the way we have mobile which has become an integral part in our everyday life and this is called you know this because of the new revolution of this technology embeddedness of this technology now when we had railways as an outcome of uh, industrial revolution and many more uh, that was not uh, embedded in our everyday life as such so if you compare uh, the technology which eventually you know contributed towards the invention of railways and the the general purpose technology called let us call it uh, mobile you know then uh, this embeddedness of this new technology because of general purpose technology so that is another fundamental difference between uh, digital revolution now and industrial revolution then so as a sociologist we need to compare these two revolutions and the way digital revolution is shaping and reshaping the economy the polity the society the whole institutions in which as a sociologist we are interested in thank you sir uh, for giving the answer to these questions this is a very important uh, and you have raised very important points as there is a difference between first industrial revolution which has given birth to the sociology and today's digital revolution uh, which is giving rise to the Uh, digital society so we need a uh, digital sociology to focus on all the issues which have now become new so going uh, forward to the next questions sir i would uh, also like to ask you uh, what are the various subject matters that can uh, cover by digital sociology yeah, well as far as the subject matter is concerned it's more or less similar uh the many important uh, themes which are of the subject matter of sociology power is one social stratification is another movements that is another area gender that is you know so family as an institution and so on and so forth to name a few uh, subject matter will are more or less the same with the difference that the because of the digital revolution the way it is impacting the family as an institution the way it is uh, uh, let it, let us call it that you know like it is helping in uh, gender issues as such you know me too movement is one of the examples uh, to say uh, similarly the 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 socialization earlier family used to play crucial role in uh, socialization and of course subsequently schools and peer groups and others but then now how because of the digital revolution this uh, uh, google g and you know netflix and there are many uh, apps software which are also uh, use depending upon which age group one comes from and they are taking advantage of or use of this new technology as such so it is uh, heavily influencing uh, our subject matter uh, but then obviously when we look at say power it's not possible to cover all you know but then say for example that if you want to study power then the sources of power it could be ethnicity it could be caste it could be class age kinship as such economy non economic dimensions the sources of power or where the power lies now because of this digital uh, technology how the coders 
you know, like the, the, the way the program is made and uh, that programmer in the name of coding, uh, uh, you know, the power is hidden and Manuel Castle has referred about uh, the nuances that, you know, where the power lies in this uh, new form of power research. You know? So, we have to understand that uh, because of digital revolution, this uh, uh, coders, the way they are having power to uh, uh, play with the people, you know, in the name of privacy, in the name of surveillance, you know, uh, so, so that is one in a very certain way. But then also, uh, in terms of digital divide, you know, that, you know, some may have an access to it, others may not have an access to it. So access to digital resources also uh, empowers someone or disempowers someone. So, so, so we need to bring this notion of uh, digital resources in term, uh, from the canon of digital divide uh, as such. You know, so uh, th these are some of the subject matter which in many ways we take care from the conventional subject matter. But then we add a new dimension because of the digital revolution. These concepts are uh, becoming quite relevant, and conventional concepts alone cannot are insufficient. And these conventional concepts need to be supplemented with some new concepts which are evolving and emerging. Uh, timeless time is one concept. Then a space of flow. Manuel Castles talks about is another concept. Uh, one of my students has coined a terminology concept, new concept, digital broker. That when we talk of digital inclusion for rural India, how uh, some uh, digital illiterates or uh, they are they are unaware of making use of uh, digital resources in everyday life for their daily necessities as such, and then. Uh, how the digital brokers a new uh, kind of entrepreneurship is emerging in rural settings. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is a very important uh, uh, answers you have given on that. What are the various subject matters of digital sociology? So, as you have said, sir, digital sociology also covers the same uh, institutions, same culture, power relations, and almost same subject matter what conventional sociology also covered but now there is need of redefining revisiting these institutions this power structure these various aspects of the society in the context of digitalization digital society well now uh, moving to the next question i would also like to ask you sir who are the uh, most eminent uh, sociologists who are working on uh, digital sociology at global level today there are quite a few uh, however, to name, uh, one name which comes to my mind, who happens to um, have written a book on entitled Digital Sociology, I think she is uh, Deborah Lepton. Mm -hmm. and the title of the book is Digital Sociology. This is well received. Uh, I think uh, Manuel Castles is uh, a very living, legendary uh, digital sociologist because, you know, he is... Uh, Information society is equated with the uh, uh, vast capital of Karl Marx by none other than Anthony Giddens. So it's a big compliment by one living sociologist uh, for another living sociologist comparing information society of uh, Manuel Castles with uh, vast capital. And I think that if you go through around 1100 pages, he spread in three volumes of. Uh, Information Society by Manuel Castles, you get lots of insights that how this uh, uh, digital sociology, which is emerging as a new subdiscipline, is important to look at the old institutions in the light of digital revolution as such as has taken place. You know, the kind of things which is talking about the network society, uh, the power relations, the family as an institution, even the social movements, gender movement, you know, all these things he has talked about and wide can canvas covering uh, not only uh, the developed part of the world,
but even uh, Latin America, Africa, Southeast Asia. So I consider it as a very good work. Uh, then also on Network Society there is uh, one by uh, I have pro uh, difficulties pronouncing this uh, Dutch name uh, Van um, Van Dijk. Uh, and uh, the title of the book is Network Society. That is again very interesting. Um, uh, you know, he is quite an influential sociologist. So, and there are others also who have made great contributions in this field of digital sociology. Thank you, sir. So, uh, as you have said, Manuel Kessel is the source of uh, developing digital sociology as a field of, uh, of sub-discipline of sociology. And of course, there are many other uh, prominent sociologists who are working on digital sociology and various aspects of the digital sociology. So, at last, I would uh, like to ask you a question, sir. What would be the future of digital sociology? That's a million dollar question that <clears throat> when it comes to future of uh, digital sociology. I can recall a friend of mine in 1983 uh, working for his PhD, a uh, Polish uh, research scholar for his PhD at York University. And that time he was working on how the kind of social web of social relationships will work in space and the way we are trying to colonize the moon and mars and the way we are thinking of our habitation in uh, uh, moon and mars uh, no doubt that it's taking such a long time to reach uh, what kind of relationships will be working here in the different world as such. But then how within our own society the way AI, artificial intelligence is uh, you know revolutionizing the whole thing. I mean it has many bad consequences as such. Now uh, and there are many writings on how AI is going to shape and reshape the society. Uh, uh, that is something uh, some consider it quite uh, alarming as such. Uh, say, for example, in conventional classroom situation, a teacher will come and deliver the lecture to the students as such, and the students will listen. Who knows that in near future, the new generation uh, will have a robot teaching taking the class instead of a human being taking the class as such. So quite intimidating as such, you know. And it's not only just in a classroom situation, but it could be in all conceivable walks of life. You go to a restaurant and it happened, even in India it happened, that in some restaurants, you know, because of COVID-19, uh, to, to have contact less uh, in, uh, you know, uh, in the name of contact, uh, contactless hospitality. Contactless hospitality uh, how the robots were serving yes. instead of waiters yes. uh, serving human beings as such. Uh, at the one hand, uh, even the hospitality could be sustained, uh, keeping contactless, but at the same time it is quite alarming that you know how it will affect the employment sector, mm -hmm. how many people will be thrown out from yes. the job as such. So that is a concern, but then you know like Whenever there had been some technological revolution, it happened in industrial revolution. I will give just one example that because of the introduction of trains in uh, India, you know, like the mode of transportation used to be also uh, waterways and such. And mallas, uh, they were employed. And can you imagine? Unfortunately, we don't have enormous studies to substantiate the point I am drawing attention towards. But because of roadways during British period and mainly railways, introduction of the railways, hundreds of thousands of people doing the traditional job of transportation in waterways and roadways got displaced. Yes. Can you imagine the consequences they had to meet? 
Similarly, we can see now, because of the digital revolution, that how millions of people in Indian society will get, uh, you know, thrown out from the conventional employment as such. So that is the dark side of uh, AI, which is quite intimidating. In but then who knows that there will be many new avenues which will come up. So we have to weigh all these things and I think it is high time that technology should not be left to the technologists themselves like uh, you know the engineers and uh, uh, scientists but I think the technology should be better uh, and equally and properly and you know examined and studied seriously by social scientists to make a better society so in pursuit of uh, a good society a healthy society i think that the future of uh, digital sociology is great and uh, sociologists can contribute a lot in this field of uh, uh, knowledge as such thank you sir uh, it's very uh, important things that I have got to learn that how uh, digital sociology can cover the new developments as you have given the example of AI in the classroom. There may be a time when uh, robots may take up many of the teaching learning responsibilities as you have also mentioned about uh, the contractless hospitality in many hospitals during COVID-19. So in this way there would be many new developments which can be focused and covered by digital sociology. So digital sociology future as you have said is a great and it will cover, it will uh, include lot of aspects and there are many other issues like digital divide, digital exclusion, inclusion which should also be uh, studied more, uh, more uh, with more, uh, uh, more insight and more uh, scientific way. So I think uh, this much understanding and this much interactions will uh, provide a brief idea of what is digital or sociology to the audience and i once again thank you uh, sir martin sir for uh, joining us in the uh, sociological talk segment of sociology for life and giving reply to all the questions which are mainly the questions of students scholars and we all academicians the uh, young academicians and i think it will help our audiences. Thanks a lot indeed for giving me this opportunity to share my views. Thank you. Thank you.